collection of sparkling falls from the Car Talk archives. Sparkling? What'd you do? Spill ginger ale on the tapes? <laughs> I did, as a matter of fact. Anyway, the subject of this collection is couples. Yes, couples and relationships. That's right, and how all issues in human relationships are eventually, you ready for this? Yeah. Are eventually revealed through cars. Oh, this is gonna be good. I mean, I can see a PhD dissertation right now. Here's the title. Supplementary <laughs> emotional conflict and resolution. Wait a minute, I'm writing it down. <laughs> Supplementary <laughs> emotional conflict and conflict resolution in the marital <laughs> industrial complex. Huh? What do you think? <laughs> I'm on this. <laughs> I'll bet you are. In the meantime, let's start by looking at the early stages of a relationship, meeting the person of your dreams. Oh, yes. And how it so often involves a car, somehow, doesn't it? But in this particular case with a caller named Chris, the involvement of a car was more than just tangential. Oh, yeah. Listen, listen to this. 800-332-9287. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Chris in Colorado Springs. Chris, yeah. What's up, man? My question is about how to go about meeting women in traffic. You know, this can be a depressing time of Ooh. year for us bachelors. Ah. And I was wondering if you had any uh, good strategies. Wow. You know, short of uh, having a head-on or yeah. uh, playing bumper cars. Well, oh, in I other mean, words, how to get how to get that female that you that you spied through you, from your driver's seat? Yes. To first of all notice you. Yes. And then to actually roll down her window. Why would and why would anyone do that? Why would any this, this boy, Chris? This is a challenge. Wait a minute! Don't give up, though. No, I'm not giving up because I mean I tried this for years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, is it appropriate at a stoplight to just get out of your car and leave it there and walk around to the passenger side and knock on the on the on the glass to get in? No, you go to jail. <laughs> no, 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 that's not good. It's, I mean, you have, it, this is going to be voluntary on her part. <laughs> so either she's got, you have to have a car that she's interested in, for example, and. I don't know how you're well, going to get her. Well, that's obviously why some guys go out and buy Ferrari Testarossas. Testaronis. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's obviously why, because it's a, it's the kind of a car that you think yeah. women will say, wow, what's that? And I have noticed. Yeah. In fact, this past summer I was driving a BMW Z3. Yeah. On the highway. Yeah. With the top down. Yes. <laughs> and the wind blowing through my... Bald spot. <laughs> but as I was, I mean, I, you know, I got enough hair to almost fake it. I mean, the sure. stuff was blowing around. Yeah, yeah. And a car full of young girls yeah. had been following me, I noticed, at a, at a distance. They were in the left hand lane. He's still my heart. <laughs> I was in the right hand lane. And this, this car full of young babes yeah. is following me. Yeah. Obviously, wanting to check out not just the car, but who but is driving who's behind the wheel. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, you yeah. never saw. A 65 dart moved faster <laughs> than when they pulled up next to me and found out who was driving. <laughs> so there is the they car were disappointed, is a, you might they say. They were. They yeah. were. But well, they wanted to see the car, and when they saw the car and who was behind the wheel, boy, they zoomed off on that dart, <laughs> and, yeah. they, and they were gone. So the car, obviously, you can, have, you can buy an interesting and expensive sports car. Well, I'll liquidate my entire stock portfolio first thing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the thing that got me thinking about this was was the fact that cars are so damn reliable these days that there yeah. just aren't any damsels in distress, you know, to be saved with their yeah. cars broken down by the side of the road. Anymore. Yeah, You're and nobody wants to be right. saved anyway because all they'd want you to do is call the police. <laughs> nobody, don't get out of your car. If you want to do me a favor, call the police yeah. on your cell phone. Or they have cell phones. And you can't trust anybody, and that's part of the problem, right. too. Well, Chris, I think... Yes. The solution that, that I know that guys like Berman used for years because he could never get any girls to talk to him was a dog. Oh, the puppy. A puppy dog, especially. Yeah. Mm. It's got to be some. I mean, nothing. I, nothing I is cuter. Yeah, I don't care if you're allergic. <laughs> yeah, I don't like dogs. I don't care. And, and my cat doesn't like the car very much. No, for your know, cats are no good. But See that? Nothing, you're a cat person. Nothing is cuter than a little golden retriever furry golden retriever oh. puppy. I Six mean, if you didn't old. have women all over you. Well, now, wait a second. I'm cuter than a golden uh, I retriever I don't think so. Oh, come on, <laughs> will you? No. <laughs> no. Quasimodo could have a golden retriever puppy on the end of a leash. Right. 
and Christy Brinkley would be beaten on the door to yeah. beat him. Trust us. I mean, you do have an interesting idea here, though, that, I mean, there's the, the positive side, the silver lining to a traffic jam is you could meet the love of your life if you only knew how to do it. Mm. So think about it. People. So what, what, what do you use? For, if you were to roll down the window, mm -hmm. what would you say to an attractive female that's in the car next to you? Yeah, what if, I mean, what if you were lucky enough to get her to roll down her window? Or better than that, she turned to you and smiled. Oh! Uh -huh. well, oh! What would be your next step? I know, his next line would be... All of American men are dying to know this. What okay. would you say next? I would say uh, my car would like to get together again with your car. Bad. And we're both invited. Bad. Uh, the females in the group. Okay. Karen <laughs> is giving two thumbs down. Two thumbs Catherine, down. One, six. Six thumbs down. Yeah, that's... that's try dumb. again. Try another one. Okay. Um, so, there you are. You're in traffic. You've been in traffic. You've, you're going along. Bumper the, to bumper. The you car catch next up to you her. A couple she catches up exactly, to you. Exactly. Back and forth. Back and, and forth. And she just turns to you. She turns to you. And, and with only spoken words, she smiles. Oh! And you and rolls, roll down your window. And she rolls down hers. She rolls down her window. And you say what, Chris? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it. You well, got it. I got it. Well, I th I think Karen and Catherine agree that that's better than the first one. <laughs> well, Chris, I don't know what the answer is, and obviously you don't either. No, right. But right. maybe we'll get some suggestions from people. Well, the, 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 that that works good. But trust us, the puppy, the puppy, the God. puppy works. Yeah. Chris, I like it. We yeah. want you to know we're here to help. Oh, I re that really touched me. We're with me. you, Chris. Hey, Chris, yeah. thanks a lot for your call. Hey, thank <laughs> See you. See you later. <laughs> 1-800-332-9287. That's the question all America wants to know wow. the answer to. Interesting. What do you say? What do you say? You've got one line, and it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Having your puppy jump off, off jump up off the seat, ah! put its paws on the windowsill, That's and it. wag its tail. Well, we all admit, we all agree that that is without doubt a foolproof strategy. Yeah. We know that. And her, her next line, her line would be, oh, what a beautiful doggy. <laughs> and, and, then, and, you, then, and, and then even then, what do you say? I just got him. <laughs> and yeah, do you know anything yeah. about dogs? He's You'll... peeing in my lap right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my crushed Corinthian leather. <laughs> we ended up getting tons of mail on this. I think my favorite line was this one. Do you believe in love at first sight? And if not, will you wait here while I drive around the block? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go a little further down the relational timeline here. Yeah, right. L let's say you've already met the man or woman of your dreams. The puppy is now a 180-pound Great Dane. <laughs> it's taken over the bed and the kitchen, and you and your honey are sleeping on the porch. <laughs> Where the dog should be. <laughs> well, eventually, there's going to be a decision to make, right? Yeah. How do you get yourself out of this mess? <laughs> and whose stupid idea was it to get a puppy in the first place? No, 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 no. The question is, do you tie the knot? Do you get married? And all oh. too often, outsiders try to influence this very personal decision. Here's a case uh, in point. 1-800-332-9287. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Elisa calling from Charleston, South Carolina. Hi. Elisa. Is that with one S or two? That's with one S. Oh, good. So what's up? Well, actually, my question is part automotive and part relationship. Yeah, that's the, that's the perfect kind. Uh, well, I know that you two are not only experienced in the automotive field, but Love. quite quite the matrimonial yeah. geniuses. Well, yeah. I, I won't claim any matrimonial geniuses. I've only had one matrimonial. <laughs> so I'll defer to my brother in the matrimonial department. <laughs> He's had multiple exposures. <laughs> <laughs> Go okay. ahead. Well, the thing is, um, I have been living with a, a man for a, a, a while now. We are in a committed relationship, although we are not married. Yeah, ah, we call that what? Living in sin. Living in sin. <laughs> okay, just want to set the record straight. <laughs> okay, but I like this is a committed, I like that term, a committed relationship. Oh, yes. When you say committed. quite some time, are we talking more than two years? Well, we've been together for more than two years. We've been living together about a year and a half now. Okay. So, um, the problem is... But my you share parents, no matrimonial vows, my child. That's right, and my, my parents want us to get married. We're ministers, by the way. <laughs> we can do this on the air. Did well, you know? they want us to get married badly enough that they've offered to buy us a new car if we do it. Oh. 
Really? Yeah. Do you think that I should do it? That's why I'm calling you for advice. Gee, do, you, do, we, do we think you should hold up your parents? Wait, wait, I mean, no. Are they doing it because they're embarrassed to tell their friends and neighbors? Of course. They no, are. I think that, well, maybe a little bit of that maybe. there, you know, from the old school, but wait, I think they just want me to be happy. But what if, what if they had never made you this offer? Would you and Mr. Wright have, in fact, gotten married, or are you perfectly happy to continue in this, quote, committed relationship? Well, we probably would have eventually gotten married, but my car's really been um, acting up a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want your parents to know that we were going to do this anyway, Mom, but as long as you want to come across with a new car, fine. Well, that I, that's deal? why I'm calling you. I don't know. Is that what I should so do? You, well, I just want to know, I don't if, know if this is ethical. I mean, this is, this is, this is deception. This is deception, pure and simple. Oh, no, no, I don't think they're deceived. I mean, they don't think that my car is in perfect order. They know that it's not. They know that you need a car, and they're trying to Drive. incentivize. Yeah, incentivize. That's good. You. So how old are you, you now, Alisa? I'm in my early 30s. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, take the car, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how has your relationship been with your parents like, of all, all these years? Oh, my parents have been wonderful to me. They've always been very loving, giving people. Loving, giving people. But and they, are they live in Michigan. Are they loving... Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's the best <laughs> What you have to worry about is other people controlling your life. And if you allow other people to control your life, even from a distance, then how different is that well, from any other kind of criminal activity. Have they bribed you any, at any other time in the past? Well, obviously they have. She said they're very giving people. And, and it sounds to me like they're giving to control you. Ooh, Trying you're Trying to deep. let go here. No, no I don't my think therapist they... has never mentioned that. No, well, you haven't been going to a good therapist then, have you? <laughs> I hope he's not listening right <laughs> I now. I mean, these parents are obviously trying to control your life forever. Well, no, I think they, they like... They like to see a little bit more security in my future, I believe. And how about, how about this one? Would be that would uh, be that security. All right, Elisa, it's it's two years down the road, and they say, Elisa, it's very nice that you're driving around in your nice Toyota Tercel, uh, and I hope everything's fine. But isn't it time that you and Mr. Wright had some kids <laughs> and moved to Michigan? And you say, well, what's it worth to you, Mom, Dad? Oh, and they I say, well, I think we I think we can go up to a Camry. Are you saying I'm opening a can of worms? If you I ain't just offer? kidding. A can well, of on, worms. On the other hand, you may be lining yourself up for a lifetime supply of cars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're willing to be controlled and manipulated in this way, then for a lousy car, well, then so fine. You, well, I don't know. That's I don't know if I'm being manipulated because, like I said, we'll probably an, end up getting married eventually anyway. Oh, but yeah, I know. But mm. we'll probably end off of ultimately get eventually getting married anyway. <laughs> It's not the same as you'll get married on June 7th <laughs> when we hand you the title wow. to the Tercel. Elisa, this is quite an interesting question. So uh, does he know of this deal with the car? Yes, my mother approached him with it separately. Oh, she approached him She told him, and then she told me. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, All right, I boy, understand. I understand. oh, boy. <laughs> I understand now. What a tangled web we weave. <laughs> I understand it all now. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they basically are trying to put the ring through this guy's nose uh, from Michigan. Well, I don't, I, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. Well, do you... Do you, do you, do you uh, they're influencing a little bit, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you think that they're really trying to control you? Or him? Well, then, then you're just telling me that I shouldn't get married at all. I think you should dump him. I think you should get married if you <laughs> feel like getting married. Right. And Mr. Wright wants to get married, too. But, jeez, did you be bribed? Well, no, I didn't really think of it as a bribe. I thought of it <laughs> You didn't think incentive. of it as a bribe? <laughs> it, but it isn't a bribe for her. It's no. He's the one being bribed. Yeah, it's well, clear no, to me now. Be, more, more I, important, I, I, he has a car. <laughs> well, I know, but more important than anything, he's going to want to marry you for you. That's what he says. And not the car. That's what he says. Unless it's a Q45. <laughs> <laughs> but if he doesn't love you enough to marry you without any incentives, then you don't want him. Yeah. 
That's what it boils down to. Yeah. And tell your parents that they should stay out of it. Let, let's get let's get serious. Do you love this guy? Yes. Cool. Very much. Then that's it. I presume he loves you too. I, I would Well, we yeah. don't know that. <laughs> and and the, the 300ZX had nothing to do with it. <laughs> we'll find out. Right, thank you. Let you have for you called us, huh? Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Now, we actually know what happened because we had Lisa back on the show about a year later, I think. Yeah. And the story has a very happy ending because Lisa did, in fact, get married. And the next time we talked to her, she was in possession of both the wedding ring and a brand new Ford Explorer. <laughs> but she said the two were completely unrelated. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, well, moving right along, you've met someone, you've made the decision to get married, now you enter the wonderful realm of the husband-wife dispute. <laughs> right, this is where people like me and my brother can really do some damage. <laughs> I mean, listen to this one. Two, nine, two, eight, seven. <laughs> Hello, you're on Car Talk. I'm Ellen. 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 Yeah. What part of the salt are you from? How could you tell? How could I tell? <laughs> <laughs> you just alienated all the southerners now. Go ahead. You're on a roll, man. <laughs> oh. uh, I'd say Georgia. Uh, no. If I thought we had any listeners in Georgia, I would say Huntsville, Georgia. Huntsville, Alabama. No. I give up. Aberdeen, Mississippi. Aberdeen. Aberdeen. What's up, Ellen? Well, I called because my husband and I kind of have this um, ongoing dispute. There and are lots has... of husband and wife disputes, you know? Yeah. Well, several months ago, my husband bought his dream car. Yeah? And it's a 1992 Ford Explorer. Good for him. I mean, he is so happy with this car. I'm he, happy he's, for He just him. bought this. Yeah. He um, has been hesitant to let me drive it at mm. times. Uh-huh. Why? And, well... The first That's time I took it out, I um, had a wreck. It was uh, not my fault. No. But uh, nevertheless, it was a wreck. Yeah, right. You serious? I mean, was it serious? No, I was not hurt. The man was not hurt. So all of that was okay. No, it was clearly your fault because you were driving. It was not my fault. Well, if you weren't driving, it wouldn't have happened. Well, you know, that's true. Because he wouldn't have <laughs> driven where you drove. That's true. So, it w yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. In his mind, even yes. though it's not your fault in a legal sense, in his yes. mind, that was your fault. Uh, that, I, I hear what you're saying, and yeah. I agree, yes. And he's right. Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> the second time he let me drive it, I drove it to Tupelo, as a matter of fact. Yeah. By the way, we just lost all the women listeners. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We might as well just shut down. Who's left? All right. All right, Ellen, get to the point. Okay. <laughs> I, d I drove his vehicle to Tupelo to take my bike to get it fixed. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm notorious um, for running out of gas, you know, oh. and so yeah. I stopped at the regular Texaco station I use all the time coming back from Tupelo and filled up the vehicle and took off, and the thing stopped, and I couldn't get it to run. I didn't know what was wrong, and I hiked up back to the Texaco, and I spoke to the woman behind the counter, and she said, well, is that a diesel you have? And I said, no, and she said, well, you just filled it up with diesel. Oh. <laughs> and all of the men, and see, this was right at 4 o'clock, and one of these plants around Tupelo had just let out, yeah. and it was loaded with these men. And they and I said, oh, no, what does that mean? And they all started laughing, oh, 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 you know. And I said, oh, God, my husband's going to kill me. They said, he sure is. <laughs> and I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah, well, so I said, well, what does that mean? What can we do right now? They said, nothing. Oh. <laughs> and so this one decent man said, look, have you ever ridden behind a truck being pulled by a chain? And I said, no. And he oh. said, well, let me tell you, if you do okay, I'll drive you on home. Oh, this is turning into a nightmare. So he did pull me on the chain. He gave me all these hand signals. He told me I was nearly professional at this. Yeah. Well, anyway, I came home without the car because he took me to the service station where I was going to have to have the thing drained. Right. And I had to tell my husband. Oh, that must have been nasty, huh? It was not a pretty thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, he has told me day after day after day after day 
that I have done some type of permanent forever damage to this vehicle of his, this mm. dream car of his. Yeah, wow. I really hate the vehicle. <laughs> I don't ever want to get near it again. <laughs> oh, I don't, baby. I'd, I'd never get behind the wheel if I were you. Yeah. Ever again. So, our question is... Oh, well, there's a there's question. Nothing, yeah. The, oh. There is nothing wrong with this car. Uh, nothing... Since you no had harm it, was done to you this did car. Have the, you had the tank drained... Yes. And they filled it with gasoline, yes. started it up, and it now runs fine. It, I think it runs fine. He says, no, it doesn't. Oh. Well, you know no. why? He what? wants to be able to hold a grudge forever. Because yeah. what, you, you know, whatever happens to this thing from now until the end of time mm. is going to be blamed on you. Yeah. <laughs> so I That's think your only, you're only out here is a fire. <laughs> I think you. I think you need to hire someone to torture. You. you know that that is a possible solution. I think that's the only solution because well, it, it has is, to disappear somehow. It is true. But, I mean, when that when that vehicle has one hundred and ten thousand miles on it and it throws a rod, he's going to say, "Ellen, remember back in nineteen ninety four when you filled it up with diesel? Yeah, that's what caused it, and you won't be able to deny it." But, yeah. no, see, I am denying it, because y'all are telling me that, that I am right. Nothing's wrong with that car. Yeah, but he's he's not going to listen. Yeah, no, he's not going to listen to us. He's gonna, we're going to just lose him as a listener, too. That's right. So what, are you going to lose your male listeners now? Well, we've already lost all the male listeners, so our only hope is to agree with you, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> because okay. all we have left is a few females. Okay, so well, I'll hang in there. You're absolutely right. You did no damage to that vehicle, and anything he notices which isn't quite right, I'm having trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what did they just drain it out and fill it up with gasoline? That's all they did. He says it doesn't run as smoothly. He says that there are all kinds of problems. And, you know, it's just, I, you know. I mean, they didn't drain out the lines. They just drained the tank. Uh, yeah. Did they take right. the tank out? The gas I tank. Know. I they, don't know. I don't have any idea. Yeah. Is your husband around? Yeah. Can we talk to him? You still don't speak in terms of him. Are you, are you, are you really kidding? No, no, no serious. You want me to go get him? Is yeah. he, will he talk to us? Oh, my God. Wait, he's a, he's a is, male. Is he, in, is he in, like, the gun room or something? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get in a room where it was quiet. He isn't cleaning his gun, is he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let me see. Go get him, Ellen. Right. <laughs> we'll never hear from her again. They want to talk to you. Right. Talk to you. <laughs> he will not talk to you. He what? won't. That's he right, because we've alienated all males. <laughs> No, here, let's be honest. Just for let's be let's be serious. Just for a moment, uh, it is possible. There is some small chance that the diesel fuel, being crud to begin with, yes. might have in fact clogged up injectors. Right. It's only one step up from the primordial soup. <laughs> That's right. I mean, diesel fuel. It, it comes out of the ground, and just the way it comes out of the ground, they put it in the tank. So it is pos It is not as refined, so to speak, as we are. I mean, as as gasoline is. Right. So it is possible that he, that your husband is indeed right. So I would get them to put some, to maybe clean the injectors, or even put some injector cleaner yeah, in the There gas are many tank. additives on the market that will help to clean the injectors and, and make them work the way, and make, get the spray pattern back okay. to where it, it should be, and that will help. Okay. But, but the more important issue was restoring your, your relationship here to, <laughs> to where it was before you started all this. Assuming it was all right. It must have been all right. He gave her... The vehicle to drive, so yeah. he must have had some degree of trust. Well, well, you, Ellen, you sound. I mean, I don't know what your husband's problem is here. You sound like a very nice lady. Oh, I think so. I think you and are. And that's the only thing that has saved your butt. <laughs> 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 Ellen, Thanks. it has been a joy and pleasure talking to you. Oh, yes. Thank you. And tell him oh, yes. to keep smiling. It's only a car. And yeah. I'll keep listening. Yeah. Okay. Tell him to lighten up. I can't speak for him, but I will. All right. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> wow, he wouldn't even talk to us. I guess he was pretty steamed. I mean, you can't be like that. you got to forgive. You can't have a marriage That's if you right. can't forgive your mm -hmm. spouse. I mean, everyone screws up once in a while, right? I'd be willing to bet that in your marriage, your wife has to do most of the forgiving, right? Which wife are you talking about? <laughs> I rest my case. Anyway, here's a call that has to do with an issue at the heart of any relationship. Honesty. 
But you can tell by the way this one starts out that there's something fishy going on here. Listen to this. Hello, you're on Car Talk. This is Fred from Hartford, but I'm telling you right now that's an alias because I got something so sensitive. If my wife ever heard it or someone told her about it, I'd be dead. <laughs> so your name is not Fred, and it's unlikely that you're even from Hartford. You got it. Okay. Okay. That's good. So I, I'll put uh, Fred in quotes. Right. And I'll put Hartford in quotes. There you go. Okay. I've got a... Uh, is, and you describe this as big... Very sensitive? It's very sensitive. Well, let's hear it. I can't wait. This is a uh, potential family issue. Wait, and since you said that, I'm going to put sensitive in quotes, too. All right. I've got now three sets of quotes. Okay. Okay, Fred. One more quote, and you'll have a gallon. (laughs) (laughs) A couple years ago, my friend bought a a new car. Wait, is it your real friend or just... No, 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 real friend. Okay. Um, I won't give you names, but I'll tell you the real story. (laughs) Yeah. My uh, friend bought a new car, and he brought it over. And I looked at it, and I thought it was one of the ugliest things I'd ever seen. But you never tell anybody that. So I said, gee, that's a great-looking car you got there. Oh. And I went on and on how nice a car it was. Well, my wife was standing there watching me say this. Uh-oh. Cut to two years later, about a few months ago, um, he uh, decides to the lease is up, and he decides to sell the car. I thought you were going to say he decides to get married, and he brings his girlfriend over. No. <laughs> and you it, say, that hey, that's a quite a nice-looking girlfriend I, you got there. She looks just like the front of your car. I could deal with that. <laughs> that would be easy to deal with. <laughs> no, what happens was I, my wife says, oh, come on down to the garage. You know, I need some help moving something. And the car is there with a big bow on it, and she says, I know you liked it so much, I bought it for you. <laughs> That's what you get. Oh, what a being old web we dis- weave. Honest. And so I now have this quandary. Wow. Do I suck it up like a big guy and just say, gee, that's thanks very much, which I've done so far? Or do I fess up to her the fact that I really don't like this car and that the fact you're probably going to make me drive it till I have 150,000 miles on it is just too much to bear? <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Fred, Fred, Fred. I can't say that you don't deserve every bit of it. <laughs> well, I mean... Well, what, it's, it's important that you tell us what the car is. Okay. It's a Saab, and it was the first year that they made the new 900 body, 94. Yeah. So it, okay. when I looked at it, it sort of looked bulbous and kind of strange looking. Yeah. Um, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, that, beauty that was, is in the point. eye of the beholder, yeah. as is ugliness. Yes. Yeah, ugliness even more so. <laughs> yeah. See, I mean, when you, t- when you started to tell the story, and you said that he brought the car over, mm-hmm. and you thought it was horribly ugly... Mm-hmm. And then you told us, but being a nice guy, you said to him, gee, what a nice-looking car. I was going to say, there's no reason to say the opposite of what you think. You could have said <laughs> nothing. nothing. <laughs> or you could have said good luck. You could have said something neutral, like, gee, I understand these are really good in snow. <laughs> right. I could have. Yeah. You could but, have. But you opened your big mouth. I did. Yeah, your wife is, I'm sure, a wonderful woman, and the fact that you have de- you're, you're about to try to deceive her again. No, you can't yeah, do you that. You want us to, tr- to figure out a scheme for you. I mean, it's one thing to lie to your dear friend, mm-hmm. but you can't lie to your own wife. Yeah. Trust me on this. You but know why? You think I ought to come clean and They catch you every like time. It. Oh, yeah, they do catch you. It <laughs> There's may, no way you can lie to It may to take time. <laughs> they always catch you. <laughs> so you have to fess up All to right. your wife. Yeah, I and, think and so. You have to tell her, hun... This is the sweetest thing you could have ever done, and I know it's put you out $17,000. That's the number. (laughs) (laughs) But I have to tell you that I... I mean, do you still hate the 94 Saab as much as you did then? No, not as much. Well, as your penance, my son, not only (laughs) shall you tell the truth to your wife, Mm -hmm. but you shall drive this car for at least two years before you sell it. (laughs) And say three Our Fathers (laughs) and three Hail Marys. All right. And make a novena. If you don't know how to make one, I can get the plants for you. <laughs> and I know where to get the lump of sheep. <laughs> yeah, I think you have... Jeez. I, th- I just come clean on the whole thing, right? I think you just got to... Oh, absolutely. Okay. I think I you think have you, to come yeah. clean. That's the only way. And you will feel an incredible lightness of being when this happens. Or an incredible hit to the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. A dope slap may be in order. <laughs> I'll have to take it. <laughs> you are in it deep. You would have buy a lot of flowers, Fred. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll call you from the hospital after I tell her. <laughs> I mean, I am curious to know how you make out because this would be uh, experience for us as well. All right. Because things like this could happen in our lives, and I would like to know how this advice we gave you works. I mean, she may turn around and dump you and run off right. with your friend. On the other hand, you got a nice Lexus car. now. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, he's got a new car, right. <laughs> Let us know how you like sleeping in the garage anyway. <laughs> I will. See you, Fred. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. See that? Boy, he was just oh, trying to be nice. Boy, he oh, was just boy, trying oh, to be nice. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Can you get yourself in trouble by not telling the truth? Well, you know, I was thinking about this just the other day, and lots of times, you, you don't really tell a lie, but you don't really tell the truth either. And sometimes you do it just to be polite. I remember I was in the presence of someone the other day, and I can't remember who it was, but I'm sure he or she will remember and, and call me about it. And he or she said something that I really wasn't interested in at all. And I, you to know, what conversation. You, to make conversation, I did the nodding and, oh, really? Oh, gee, that's interesting. I nod off. It, yeah. it saved Instead me of saying, you know, I don't have the slightest amount of interest in what you're telling me. You do say things like, gee, that's really good. That's And, and then if they pick it up, oh, you really like it? Well, I can get you one, you know. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're in over your head. Right, you say, no, 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 I don't want to trouble <laughs> no, yourself. No, I was just lying. I was just trying and to be polite. that's the time when you should tell the truth. When, you, when it gets to that first crossroad, yeah. Yeah. you should say, ah, I didn't mean it. I was just lying. <laughs> yeah. Now, we actually checked in with Fred some months later. And when we asked him what happened, he said he still hadn't told his wife. <laughs> what a chicken. He also said <laughs> things were closing in around him because, remember, he said Fred wasn't his real name. But his friends and colleagues apparently heard the show, recognized his voice, and were coming at them at work and saying, Hi, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> well, he deserves it. I mean, you shouldn't lie to your wife in the first place. But if you do, the last thing you want to do is call National Public Radio and blab about it. <laughs> Fred, what were you thinking? <laughs> All right, let's move on. I mean, there are so many causes of husband-wife disputes, we could never cover them all. But one we can't overlook is the ubiquitous male answer syndrome. <laughs> Male answer syndrome is the belief that being right or wrong is not nearly as important as sounding like you know what you're talking about. Yes, I've employed that theory for years right here on this show. <laughs> yes, you have been very successfully, I might add. Anyway, what I particularly liked about this call is the caller's reaction when we tell her who's right. Listen to this. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Nancy from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Pembroke Pines, yep. Florida. <laughs> What's up, Nancy? Okay. Well, my husband and I are having a discussion. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. for a fight. Yep. yep. And, um, well, he he drives our a 93 Geo Prism. I always tell my kids, your mother and I are having a discussion. <laughs> wink, wink. 93 Prism. Uh-huh. Yes. And I drive the 87 Plymouth Sundance. Which is okay with us. That's not the problem. Okay. Okay. And we were in the Plymouth Sundance one day, and he was driving, and tootle we were tootling along, and he noticed that the lever on the air conditioner was in the recirculate position. Which is where it should be. Except that he said to me, do you drive like that all the time? And I said, yeah, because it cools the car better. And he said, it's not a good idea to drive for long periods with that recirculate lever on because of the possibility of exhaust fumes seeping into the passenger compartment. Yes, it's a little known fact that the air conditioner is powered by the exhaust from the vehicle. <laughs> yeah, so I sort of poo-pooed that, and, and so then he, he said, no, 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 it's really true, and in fact, he said it could be so dangerous that you could die. And so we both think we're right, you see, because I say that's ridiculous, and he says that's true. So we thought we would go to car court and the Judge Wapners of Public Radio. That's us. Yep. We'll, get, we'll tell you a couple of whoppers right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wapner, so Wapner. Can you settle this for us? Of course we well, can. Of course I we knew can. it. I mean, I, I, I'm trying, I'm struggling with the every one of these wacko stories about cars uh -huh. has some basis and I'm trying I'm just trying In the to the male gender I'm trying to figure out what could have been the genesis of this crazy tale that your he, husband has told you he said he read it somewhere well it, it indeed the, first of all let's go back four or five steps by the fact that you by by keeping it on recirculation you do cool the car faster and it probably even mentions that in your book yeah. because when you're on recirculate, you pretty much, pretty much recirculate the air that's in the car. And if you're taking air that starts off at 100 degrees and you cool it down to 90, 80, 70, da-da-da, you'll get there much faster by cooling the air that's already been cooled off 
as opposed to taking fresh air from the outside all the time and exhausting that air you just cooled off. Right. right. However, yep. when you have it on on, re on recirculate, you do not shunt off the outside air completely. Whether you have it on recirculate or not, you are all, always getting some outside air coming in. Okay. So you are perfectly within your constitutional rights. Absolutely. To leave it on recirculate. Oh boy. <laughs> 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 That's good, Nancy. That was very, very good. <laughs> oh, boy. that air you just cooled off right right however yep. when you have it on on re on recirculate you do not shunt off the outside air completely whether you have it on recirculate or not you are all always getting some outside air coming in okay so you are perfectly within your constitutional rights absolutely to leave it on recirculate oh boy <laughs> 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 That's good, Nancy. That was very, very good. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and not only that, but you've got the right, the constitutional right now to also tell your husband that he's nuts. Wow. <laughs> and that's even better, isn't it? It is. Now, before you just... You just uh, spring this on him, Nancy. Yeah. I'd cook him a nice dinner first. I, yeah, right. <laughs> be very, be careful. Men have very fragile egos, as you know. Well, yes, I do know so, that. And I predicted his first reaction will be, those jerks don't know what they're talking about. That will be his first reaction. I'll always be on the offensive yes. when you, you know you're in big trouble. Right. So I he, will be so sweet when I say yeah. to him that he's nuts. I will. Yeah. I promise. Be okay. extra, extra careful. <laughs> and yeah. Nancy, I, I can tell that you're just the person to be that sweet. You yes, sound like I a will. wonderful person. I will. I Despite promise. Despite the fact that you said, oh boy, <laughs> say, say it again. <laughs> now, can, can I hang up now so I can call him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> Bye, Nancy. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> we blew his <laughs> cover, didn't we? <laughs> She'll never believe another word he says about anything technical as long as he lives. Nor should she. But you know, that's a perfect example of the bind that we always get ourselves into. We're always tempted to agree with the female callers because they're usually what? They're usually right. <laughs> but then we get home after the show uh. and our wives take what we said and they hang us with it. <laughs> they hang us with it, Jerry. They hang us. Well, here's a case in which we managed to see the very trap we're laying for ourselves just in the nick of time and manage a daring <laughs> daylight escape. <laughs> if I do say so myself, you did very well here. Why, thank you. Here it is. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi. Hi. This is Donna from San Diego. Donna, we've been looking for you. <laughs> What's well, up? I'm glad you found me because I have a very serious problem. Yeah? I think, in fact, it might have an impact on my marriage. Ah, did you call the right people? I, Dr. Well, and Mrs. Ruth here. <laughs> yes? Well, I hope so. Um, the problem is that about a month ago... Um, I decided that it was time to buy a new car, and I previously owned an 87 Toyota Camry wagon uh -huh. with an automatic transmission, great car for carpooling, I could be the gymnastics driver, perfect car, but I decided that it was time to have an experience in driving, so I decided to buy a Mazda Miata. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Wait a minute, the, the gymnastics business, do you have kids? Oh yes, I have a, a nine-year-old daughter. Your old daughter. Yes. Yeah. And, and a so, husband. And a husband. Got it. All right. I got the and, picture now. Okay. Yeah. And what happened was I discussed this with my husband, and he said, sure, you should get a sports car. It's what you really want. And I went through the whole process of finding a buyer for my Camry and working out all the financial arrangements. And then when I drove the car home, my husband decided that he should play a very important role in terms of who gets to drive the car <laughs> and how it's operated. <laughs> yeah. He, did he give you stories like this? The breaking in period is very important, Donna. I and if you've never broken in a new engine, I better take care of this for you. 
I can't believe you said that. That's exactly what my husband said to me. <laughs> Ashley, yeah, I think classic. he called. I think he called us on our private line about two months ago. <laughs> yeah, this is a classic ploy. Yeah. You know what? It's amazing. He told me that he read the manual from cover to cover yeah, the and first it's... night, and he told me that he should be the one with the uh, to run the car through up to the red stripe zone. <laughs> that it needs that kind of a <laughs> I love it. Oh, you know what is it with men? What I, is it with them? I don't know. I tried to tell him. I said, "Listen, you know, I think I can read the manual and figure out what needs to be done with this." Well, manual. I think if you look closely at this situation it probably has a, a lot to do with how many girls whistled at him while he was driving this car <laughs> that first day well that how many have had something to do with his decision to continue driving it how many days beyond 40 is he um he's 45 well, yeah as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. yeah well they won't be whistling long <laughs> so, <laughs> so you'll get the car back sooner or later right when he finds out that even the miata's not going to help him he'll give you back the car right is he got the hair club for men yet <laughs> he might decide he needs more hair now <laughs> no but you're absolutely right don i mean men are such jerks when it comes to this i mean to right. think that an intelligent woman like you would fall for such a lame brain story you did though didn't you well, well, not exactly. You know, he really, he really tried hard, though. He tried to convince me that he had to be the responsible, conservative one. Yeah. Now he has to drive his car for gymnastics, and I'm out driving around in this little sports car. Oh, so what is his car? Oh, he has an Isuzu Trooper. Oh, that's really exciting. Oh, see? So, oh, yeah. What he's really worried about is that someone's going to scoop you, Donna. You're going to see you. People are going to see you driving down the street with the top down in this car. And that's going to be it. He's a, he's afraid. This is a measure of his love for you. You haven't noticed a, a, I, a tan firebird following <laughs> you around, have you? <laughs> Jim no. Rockford, I think, is probably on this case. Actually, no, I was wrong. I mean, we're, we're all wrong on this. Your husband is not a jerk. This is a measure of his love for you. He's afraid that you're going to get stolen from him. And so to prevent that from happening, he wants you to drive around in the frumpy trooper, and he'll... Do the, it's, a, it's one of these, it's a rotten job, but somebody's got to do you it. Know, uh, he's, right? You know, he's right. I, and I apologize. I never met your husband, and I have to apologize. I think my brother's right that right. he's really he's really doing his best for you, Donna. He wants to keep you for himself. And so every time he says, I'll take the Miata today, throw your arms around him, give him a big kiss, and say, Hun, thanks for loving me this much. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Donna. <laughs> okay, thank you, guys. Yeah, sure. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> I like the way you got us out of that one. That was elegant, graceful even. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> it took us many years to learn some of the basic lessons of talk show hosting. Like, early on, someone would call and say, I'm thinking of getting a certain kind of car. We would try to talk them out of it. And then we finally realized that what people really wanted from us was positive reinforcement. In most cases, they already had put a deposit on the car. <laughs> or it was sitting in the driveway already. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now if someone says, I'm looking at an 88 Yugo, we say, great idea. Are they open today? <laughs> <laughs> well, we also finally learned a similar lesson about husband and wife disputes. And here's the rule. If the question involves something totally insignificant, like a car, for example, <laughs> just tell your spouse that he or she is absolutely right and forget about it. That's right. I mean, preserving the fragile ego of one's mate is much more important than lording technical correctness over him or her for a mere 50 or 60 years. <laughs> as fun as that may sound. <laughs> Here's an example of our theory in practice. Hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Dolores with a D-O instead of a D-E. Yes. From Roanoke, Virginia. Huh. Yeah. And hi, Dolores. Hi. I have a nickname, Doty, so you can call me Doty if you like. Doty? You're only the se Is that a common nickname for Dolores? I don't think so. I, I know a couple uh, girls who are Dorothy, and they call them Doty, but there are very few of us Dotys around. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we call my brother Dodo. <laughs> That's great. I, like I it. love it. I love it. So, so what's, what, what's up, Dodie? What kind of a heap do you drive, Dodie? Well, I'll tell you what. I drive a 1982 uh, Fleetwood Cadillac. <sighs> yeah. How about that? It, and yeah. it's uh, my husband and I, we have uh, his and hers Cadillacs, all right? Yeah. He's always uh, 
uh, he has driven a Cadillac because he does a lot of traveling, and he thinks that's, that's really great. You know, it's, it's much comfortable. So he's got the new one, and he gives you the old one. That's right. No, you got the hand-me-downs. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a hand-me-down Cadillac. So it's really special, especially when I drive up to his office. It, I don't know. It's sort of, uh, you know, I like to drive up and, and have both of those Fleetwoods sitting side by side. It kind of gives you a little special feeling. You know how it is? Yes. <laughs> yes. It does. It does. I can see that. Okay. Yeah. I wish I could find a matching 63 Dodge Doc for my wife, then we could have this <laughs> same joy and the feeling of oneness as you and your husband obviously have. I'm sure she'd be thrilled. <laughs> well, it, it is a thrilling experience, and you should really try to help her with that. <laughs> I'm trying. I am. Okay, well, th this is our problem. It's almost turned into a family fight, and I thought you two guys would be uh, uh, neutral and, and at least uh, tell, us, tell us the truth about it. But this is what happens. Uh, when I'm riding with him, uh, just as we pull up to a stoplight or a stop sign or whenever he's going to just stop momentarily, he, he shifts the gears. He into puts, neutral. Puts it into neutral. And I say, why do you do that? And he says, well, it's much easier on the motor. It keeps pulling and pulling, you know. And I said, well, if you want to shift gears, why don't you buy a car with a, with a gear shift? <laughs> and he, you know, and he says, well, uh, you can see that my car runs much better than yours, and that's the reason yours doesn't run as well as mine, because you don't do this. Oh, gee, Cadillac Boy. doesn't make a car with a gear shift. No. <laughs> they, actually, they Wait, did. Now, is your husband... Recently. Did she tell us what line of work her husband is in. Is he either... Does, wait a minute. Does he wear white shoes ever? Uh, he, he, he wears uh, white shoes sometimes when he's just, you know, just casual, like at the beach. Uh, at the okay, beach, but never during, right. never during working hours. No, no. Is he no. in sales? He, he, exactly. He is, uh, he's a life insurance professional. See, you can't help but put those white shoes on <laughs> once in a while. There's probably some kind of dress code at the office that prevents him from wearing those white shoes, but as soon as he gets a chance, he slips into those babies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? The the other thing is that I just thought of when when we when I drive in his or when I'm driving with him, uh, if it's if it's so so hot this summer, it's been so hot, and he will not turn the air conditioner on till about 15 minutes into the drive when you're already having. Oh, uh, you know what his problem is? No, see, I did not know. I was not going to guess he was in life insurance. I was going to guess that he was either an accountant uh -huh. or an engineer. Yeah. Okay. And now this second little peculiarity that you describe yes. even confirms further right. my idea that he was an engineer or an accountant. Uh -huh. He has oh. a degree in physics. Does that have anything ah! to do with it? <laughs> you, you, can't, uh, you can't get away from it, you know? <laughs> he has a degree in physics. My God. That's right. And, you know, and I'm a musician, so I happen to be, you know, a little like uh, in La La Land a lot of times. And, well, he, and he, this is what he thinks, that I don't know anything about it. Well, the two of you are the classic right brain versus left brain kind of people. <laughs> and you are the creative right brain type, yes. and he is the linear practical. thinking left brain brain practical kind of guy yes. and I just before we answer your question I want to know is this marriage otherwise on relatively solid ground oh just wonderful in fact about 42 years of it 42 years so you she love don't see this. him much I guess huh? you love this he's on the road a lot <laughs> you love this man I certainly do. I think he's the greatest, you know, and I don't argue with him. If he says black is white, I'll say, okay. Good for you. <laughs> then you know what to do? What? Tell him that what he's doing is absolutely right. Oh. Now, Even between, though it's all between wrong. Between you and us, yes. he's nuts. Okay. <laughs> Throwing it in neutral does not take anything when you load off the engine. It doesn't make, it's not that it's pulling all the time. Yeah. Yes, it is, but the whole mechanism is designed to do exactly that. That's why it's called an automatic yeah. transmission. And he's actually imposing more wear and tear on the drivetrain by constantly shifting out of drive into neutral and then back again. But don't tell him this because he probably has a very fragile ego. Yes, and, he does. and to find out that you, a mere right brained person, Yes. We're right all these years. 42 years you've been telling him, Frank, don't throw it in neutral, you jerk. And he doesn't care. Yeah. So don't don't tell him. It, it won't sit well. In <laughs> the right. business of the air conditioning, yes. what is he waiting for well, for no, the 15 what, minutes? Uh, what he's waiting for is he's waiting for the, the temperature inside the passenger compartment to so cool so. off so the air conditioner doesn't have to work as hard. The air conditioner doesn't care. It doesn't work any harder if it's hot in the car. It just works. Yes. Now, I hope he's not listening, is he? He's no, he isn't. He's at an insurance seminar today, and that's the reason I, uh, this is why I chose to call you today. Yeah, did he bring his <laughs> golf clubs with him when he went to the seminar? Of course, he's in life insurance. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, he's absolutely wrong. 
but okay. I think we should keep it between us All right. or among the three of us. Great. We, we should do that, and, and I think maybe that'll even get me to 50 years of... Not only that, but it'll get you into heaven because it's clear that you are an angel. <laughs> to be able to sit there for 42 years while he's doing this and say, fine, if yes. that's what you want to do, hon, <laughs> that's fine by me. And now, knowing that you're right, yes. it's going to be even harder to keep your mouth shut. Oh, <laughs> but you'll know deep down inside that you're right, and you can you can take comfort with that, I Dodie. will. And we'll... that your place in heaven is assured. Thanks for calling, Dodie. Thank it's you. And you, all are, you all are great. You make me happy every time I hear you. And you made us happy, too. Great. Thanks. See you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> so bye -bye. now we figured it out. That's how you keep a relationship together. Remember what we said about never lying to your spouse? Yeah. Well, we lied. <laughs> <laughs> right. When they're wrong and it's insignificant, you can lie all you want. If only we could remember that. Anyway, let's move on to the later stages of a relationship. Right. Let's say you're married, you've worked out the major disputes, like how often he has to sleep in the garage, <laughs> yeah, we're and then on that. kids come along. Then the kids grow up, and sooner or later they're ready for college. And around that time, you suddenly realize that your kid has developed a complete personality of his or her own, and he or she is entirely capable of causing big trouble. Or, as in the case of this kid, being a complete pain in somebody's butt. Just our kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I have to admit, this clip doesn't really belong on our Couples and Cars collection. No. In fact, it doesn't really belong anywhere, but we figured <laughs> this is an excuse to work it in. This, yeah. You know, Couples and Cars, sure. kids, all bit. I mean, we just couldn't fit this one on our last album, and we really wanted to hear it again. This became known around the office as the MIT letter. <laughs> Listen to this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> John Long and Correspondence. Well, I, as always, I don't know who, how this got to us because it comes from 25 different people and it ended up at, at the website. But here it is. It says, MIT certainly has <laughs> MIT certainly has a reputation to be proud of, but its admissions department went a little overboard, I think. The first letter is an honest-to-goodness mailing from MIT, and the second one is a prospective student's answer. So this is all legit, real true, as far as you can believe anything that comes to you via the web. Right. So this is the letter from MIT to a Mr. John T. Mongan of California. Dear John, you've got the grades, you've certainly got the PSAT scores, and now you've got a letter from MIT. Maybe you're surprised, most students would be. But you're not most students, and that's exactly why I urge you to consider carefully one of the most selective universities in America. The level of potential reflected in your performance is a powerful indicator that you might well be an excellent candidate for, M for MIT. It certainly got my attention. Engineering's not for you? No problem. It may surprise you to learn that we offer more than 40 major fields of study, from architecture to brain and cognitive sciences, from economics, perhaps the best program in the country, to writing. What? Of course you don't want to be bored. Who does? Life here is tough and demanding, but it's also fun. MIT students are imaginative and creative inside and outside the classroom. You're interested in athletics? Great! MIT has more varsity teams, 39, than most any other university on a tremendous intramural program so everybody can participate. You think we're too expensive? Don't be too sure. We've got surprises for you there, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why, not send, why not send the enclosed information request form to find out more about this unique institution? Why not do it right now? Sincerely, Michael C. Benke, Director of Admissions, P.S., if you'd like a copy of a fun-filled, fact-filled brochure, Insight, just check the appropriate box on the floor. Well, Michael C. Mike, what was this guy's name? John T. Mongan writes back <laughs> to Michael C. Benke, MIT Director of Admissions. <laughs> Dear Michael, he says, you've got the reputation, you've certainly got the pomposity, and now you've got a letter from John Mongan. <laughs> 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 Maybe you're surprised. Most universities would be. But you're not most universities, and that's why, and that's exactly why I urge you to carefully consider one of the most selective students in America. So selective that he will choose only one of the thousands of accredited universities in the country. The level of pomposity and lack of tact reflected in your letter is a powerful indicator that your august institution might well be a possibility for John Mongan's future education. It certainly got my attention. <laughs> Did this guy Benke deserve this letter back? <laughs> Don't want biochem students? No problem. <laughs> it may surprise you to learn that my interests cover over 400 fields of study. <laughs> From semantics to limnology, 
from object-oriented programming, perhaps one of the youngest professionals in the country, to classical piano. What? Of course you don't want egotistical jerks. Who does? <laughs> <laughs> Who does? I am self-indulgent and overconfident, but I'm also amusing. John Mongan is funny and amusing, whether you're laughing with him or at him. You're interested in athletes? Great. John Mongan has played more sports, 47, than almost any other student, including oddball favorites such as orienteering. You think I can pay for your school? Don't be too sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've got surprises for you there, too. <laughs> Why not send a guaranteed admission? <laughs> no pencil neck geeks, no, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough about MIT recruitment tactics. Let's get back to relationships. Sort of. Yeah. Here's our next little scenario. You've been together for a while. Right. Things are fine. Patterns and habits have started to set in. At this point, keeping that flame of love burning is one of the challenges in every long-term relationship. And here's a clip that shows you the dangers you can encounter if you try to do it by concentrating on superficial things. And this is good. Seafood diet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, well, of course, we, you realize that if, if you want to be attractive to the opposite sex, you've got to be slim and trim. Maybe. And here's the, the new diet. <laughs> this is sent to us by David Leventhal from somewhere, from the email. Uh, breakfast, half a grapefruit, one slice of whole wheat toast. Wait, wait, should I be writing these down? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dry and eight ounces of skim milk. Mm. Lunch, four ounces of lean broiled chicken breast, one cup of steamed spinach, one cup herb tea, and one Oreo cookie. Mid-afternoon snack. The rest of the Oreos in the package. <laughs> Two pints of Rocky Road ice cream. <laughs> one jar of hot fudge sauce. Nuts, cherries, and whipped cream. Dinner. <laughs> Two loaves of garlic bread. <laughs> cheese. A large sausage mushroom and cheese pizza. <laughs> and three Milky Way candy bars. <laughs> You see how things are deteriorating. Well, that's what happens when you starve yourself. You start with half a grapefruit. I can't see my eyes all the Late evening news. Entire frozen cheesecake. Entire frozen cheesecake eaten during... Obviously, you've lost control of yourself. <laughs> Directly from the freezer. <laughs> oh, while standing at the freezer. <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> I mean, you might as well get right to it, because this is what happens when you sign up for Weight Watchers. You go with the first two things for about a week. And then pretty soon you're at the two pints of Rocky Road ice cream. And the, and the entire frozen cheese <laughs> while standing at the freezer. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> That's all absolutely true. Not a false word was spoken there. Absolutely. Well, now we've come at meeting someone deciding to get married, husband-wife disputes, keeping things interesting, but we all know that sometimes relationships just don't work out. It happens to the best of us, sometimes a couple <laughs> of times. <laughs> well, this next call should give you something to keep in mind when a relationship is dissolving. 9287, hello, you're on Car Talk. Hi, this is Sarah. Sarah, is there an H at the end of it? Yes, there is. Good. Hi. Where are you from? I'm calling from Cambridge. And Massachusetts? Nice, Massachusetts. I just moved here a year and a half ago. From? Colorado. What's up? Here's my, my problem. It's kind of a little story. I moved here a year and a half ago with my 1982 Volvo four-door, which I love. Yeah. It has 100,000 miles on it, and I take very good care of it. Yeah. So here I am, and I'm looking for a mechanic. And I find this fantastic mechanic. He's so great. He's good to my car. He's honest. He's fair. It's an old car, so things need to be fixed. Let us know where he is. We'll drum him out. <laughs> we'll run him out of town on a rail. We'll have a lynching tonight. Who is this guy? <laughs> His name's Patrick. He's out in Jamaica Plain at uh, West Cork Auto. He's great. Ooh. He was very pr prote protective of me when I first moved here. Patrick you know from West Cork Auto. No, oh, we don't know him. So... 
kind of a long story short, I met a really nice guy, yeah, and I, I inter- and he also has an older car. Mm-hmm. He's from Massachusetts, and he has a mm-hmm. 72 Mercedes. And I introduced him to my mechanic because he was having some problems. Yeah. And my mechanic gave him great deals because my mechanic really likes me, and he knows that I'm good to my car, and he cuts me some slack on the oil change and the filters, and he just he cuts me a deal every now and again. Mm, this so is, I, I see, I see I, a triangle coming here. It's coming. Yes, it is. So here we go. I introduced him to this young man, uh, this man that I'm dating, yeah. and they, he starts getting all this work done on his car, really good deals, <laughs> and we've broken up. Who? Oh, you and the mechanic? No. <laughs> the you and Mercedes. The mechanic is married. Me and the Mercedes. Mechanic we broke up. He did something very bad. Oh. And so he is history. Oh. And now my question is, and after we broke up, listen to this. Yeah, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. If, he, we, if, you, if you were willing to divulge the fact that he did something very bad, you've got to tell us what it was. He was seen kissing another woman in public. Oh, that's bad. Very bad. And he was seen by by a third party, evidently. By a number of third parties. Really? Yes. Patrick and wasn't one of them, was he? No. <laughs> Patrick may be trying to no. bust you two up. You're... I have sus- suspected that from the very beginning. I did too. I mean, I, I, I mean, if Patrick, Patrick is know. giving you all these deals on the oil changes, no. Are you sure he's not putting the moves on you? Patrick's married. I'm sure he's not. He's very nice, Catholic, Irish Catholic mechanic. He's a very nice man. I'll repeat. I'm sure he's not putting the moves on you. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> no, I'm sure. But here's my question. Just just because he did something bad, yeah. I think that the, the gods were not blessing him, and he got into a car accident after we broke up. And I know that his car is being fixed. This is Mercedes now. now we're talking the about. Mercedes is being fixed. Yeah. And I just heard this through the airways. And now Patrick is working on the car, and Patrick doesn't know mm. what a little rat think. <laughs> oh, so you, I, I've got it. You don't even have to ask the question. The, no, he, the question is, question? Yeah. do you tell Patrick that you've broken up so he can charge him the regular price? Right. Or do you not tell Patrick and allow him to get the great deal right. that Patrick was willing to pass that on to him? That is the question. That is the question. Well, I would certainly drop a dime on him. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Don't you think he's gotten See, enough pain from one losing me, getting caught, and getting in a car accident? That's three bad strikes all in August. Well, yeah. Okay, here's what you got to do. Give us Patrick's number. If you don't want to call, we'll 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 rat on him. <laughs> you will? Sure. Oh, I'll definitely give it to you. Want me to give it to you off the air? Uh, I, off the air, yeah. Five five one nine. Okay, Sarah. Talk to me. Hang on a minute. We're gonna call Patrick okay. right now. <laughs> you hang on, and we'll come right back to you. Don't go okay. away. I won't go away. You'll be out on his boat. <laughs> right. Where's Colorado? Uh, is Patrick there, please? This is me. Hmm. Hi, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you probably don't know us, Patrick. Uh, this is my name's Tom, my, and my brother is Ray, and we're talking to you from the studios of WBUR in Boston. Uh-huh. We, we do a, a call-in car radio show. Okay. We just had a call from a woman named Sarah, whom you know. Sarah. She's a Sarah, customer of yours. She owns 82 eight. Volvo. She's yeah. a sweetheart. Well, she had... His well, she p- had kind words for you, too. She said you were the best mechanic in the Boston area. Oh, I doubt that. <laughs> I doubt that pretty much. Well, we t- that's what we told her, too. <laughs> we doubted it also. <laughs> but she said you were you were kind and considerate and protective of her. Oh, my God. I'm and, married. Well, well, yes. she also said that, and we, we didn't believe that either. <laughs> <laughs> no, but here's the deal. She said that she introduced a guy to you who has a 72 Mercedes. Oh, he must be her boyfriend. Yeah, yes, he's the that's boyfriend. Her boyfriend. Well, that's you, why you, she called. You you used the wrong tense of the verb. He was her boyfriend. Oh, really? Yeah, and that's why we're calling. Oh. Because she's always felt that you've given her a very good deal on her car and on the repairs, and had passed that along to this fellow with the Mercedes, figuring uh-huh. that that they were uh, an item. You know, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. And now that they're no longer together because he was caught kissing another girl, <laughs> she want she wanted to call you and and tell you that. That you should jack up the price on him and yeah. charge him the regular price, and certainly not give him any discount because maybe maybe not work for him at all, or maybe not work for him at all. <laughs> right? You might want to tell him to get his junk heap out of there. Oh my God! Or so, fix his car and really tuck it to him. I, th- <laughs> I think we might just do that. <laughs> <laughs> Good, but she was embarrassed to she was embarrassed to call you, really? and so but we told her. 
We have no shame whatsoever. I guess here. not. I guess <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do? Are you, you going to just tuck it to him, or are you going to just tell him to take it? Well, you know something that's not my needs to tuck it to anybody. See that? Good I for could you. do it. I no, knew, I I knew that. Tell him, I would just probably tell him that uh, I don't do that work in Mercedes anymore. There you go. Oh. Do, right, exactly. Good for you. We don't do those oil changes anymore. In not Mercedes. anymore. The yeah. stuff, stuff is not available. You can't work on it. It's the wrong color. Yeah. It's the wrong color. <laughs> <laughs> so friendship is more important to you than money? Uh, well, friendship is everything. Sure. How long have you been in this car repair business? Oh, I've been in it for about 18 years. How the heck did you last with a stupid philosophy like that? A uh, good personality. <laughs> <laughs> well... The next time Mr. Mercedes comes in, tell him to take a hike. Oh, well, I'm going to give him a sock force between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> she's a, she, she's okay. the best thing that came into his life. Yeah. yeah. She sounds like a very nice person. She is a real nice girl. Except she's very vindictive here, isn't she? Huh? She's rather vindictive. Uh, have you known any woman who wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I think you've said enough, Patrick. <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks Your wife may be yeah, listening. <laughs> Sorry yeah. to bother you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can we get Sarah back? I'm right here. Oh, you are? I'm um, right here. And you you couldn't hear our conversation with Patrick, I presume? I did hear it. You did hear I it? I heard the whole thing. Oh, good. <laughs> well, how do you think we did? Give well, us a I rating on a scale of 1 to 10. On a scale of 1 to 10, I thought you guys were great. I didn't like the vindictive part because <laughs> I'm not. We didn't say that. That was Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was Tom. Thing. That's right. Oh, yeah, it was me. I'm not vindictive. I was calling for advice. Right. Yeah. I was calling for your advice, and I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have told him if you told me, no, don't do it. Well, isn't it surprising, though, that Patrick w is going to choose not to work on this guy's car? Oh, isn't that sweet? Isn't well, that I have sweet? found whenever I have couples that, that take their cars to us, that oh. when they break up, oh. I lose both customers. Really? Because they're oh. both afraid to have a chance meeting. Well, I mean, how would you ever all. know? I can't keep track of who broke up with whom and make sure I schedule them for different days. What if I had Joe's car a day longer than I thought I was going to have it, and, and Sally came in to pick up her car on Wednesday, and Joe happened to come in to pick up his car, which should have been done on Tuesday, but didn't get done till Wednesday, <laughs> and they met, and there was a big incident. Well, you know, that's what surprised me when, when you said that Mr. Mercedes here was taking his car back to Patrick. Right. I was surprised that he would do that because of the chance of bumping into you. He obviously knew that you still went there. No, he still wants to talk to me. I mean, oh, he, uh, okay, so that's the reason. Yeah, he didn't think he did anything wrong. He didn't. Well, he, he really doesn't. Yeah, and you don't want to give him another chance. No, no more chances because he'd already gotten a few chances. Oh, before. he has. Okay. No, all right, well, we didn't. So, we right. weren't privy to that information. Yeah. I think so we'll just right we'll now. just leave it at the. It's yeah. Now is now is it's the time to go. He's history. Okay, all he right. is history. And that's well, you it. did the right thing, Sarah, and by I'm glad that Patrick is backing you up, right, by calling us. <laughs> Patrick is a good man. He seems to <laughs> yes, be. Yes, he is. <laughs> well, I thank you guys very much, and uh, if I ever need, um, I think the only way that Patrick will ever lose me is if I go back to Colorado. Mm. So we're together here. Well, that's good. I'm glad we can help. Thanks for calling. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 well, this concludes our album on relationships, and, and you are now armed, I suppose, with all the techniques that have uh, been employed by us so successfully in our very own relationships. I mean, and we've done, well, some of us have done. Well, we, well I, I, I mean, has either one of us done marvelously? <laughs> despite what you say, we just got this little note a slid under the door of the studio by our chief legal counsel of Hugh Lewis Dewey. Oh, jeez. And it says on here, please read this at the beginning of the tape. Beginning? Beginning? It's all over. Now he shows up. <laughs> Here's what it says. Disclaimer. Under no circumstances should anyone attempt to use any of the techniques described here without appropriate adult supervision. <laughs> Serious injury and possibly alimony payments Whoops. may <laughs> ensue. Tom and Ray will in no way be held responsible since they have their own alimony payments <laughs> to worry about. <laughs> well, good luck. Good luck anyway. Bye-bye. <laughs>